Hey. My name is Wadem. And this is Death Trash. I'm... This is... This kind of game is kind of my jam. It's kind of got that bloodborne gore punk aesthetic. It's going to be kind of gross. So if that sort of thing upsets you, if you don't like body horror, this is probably not the stream for you. I don't play this sort of game all the time, but... You know, as a treat. As a special little thing once in a while, you do this. It's... I'm not really sure what to think of it yet, because I don't know that much about it. I only really just found out about, about this game this past week, and today is the first day it's been out for early access. So it is in early access right now, this is the very first day. But I mean, props to them for having Linux support on day one. Like, that's absolutely awesome. And also, they've been working on this for about five years. I'm not actually... I don't... I'm not that familiar with what their development team is like, what their studio is like. It could just be one one person and their dog or something like that, for all I know. But... I like what I see so far. It's gonna be gross. In a cool way. <clears throat> if... If I had to guess, just based on the screenshots I've seen, it's like... It's not gonna be like Saw. It's gonna be like... Kind of that gross, uncomfortable feeling you get when you're watching certain parts of Bloodborne. Or games like that, where it's just like... Or like, um... Lovecraftian type stuff, where it's just like, you're dealing with... Thing... Giant things made out of... Flesh. Like... Here. Let's switch to the game. I'll show you what I mean. And... Oh, hang on a second. I need to fix that. I need to actually set up the game so you can see it. So it is an early access. You just get things like this. Like, what is this? It looks like a giant tree trunk made of flesh. Also a little bit like a giant squid with the way the eye is. Cause that's clearly an eye of some sort of terrible creature. And it's kind of like, it also has these, can't really see it. These kind of like cookie cutter type humanoid characters, which normally I don't really like that much, but like these cookie cutter pixel art characters, they're all very consistent with each other, which serves as a great contrast for when you're up against weird monsters, like giant freaks like this. I like that sort of thing. I think like, cause normally I don't like that st style of art, but in contrast with the weird freaks stuff, it's, it might be cool. That's my first impression so far, having not actually played any further than the main menu where, as I said in my thing, you have the option to mute puking, which I will not enable. We're gonna go into this full on. In fact, what I might do... No, I'm not gonna turn down the music. I'm gonna leave the volume the way it is. I might turn it. I might bump up the volume just a little bit for the stream. Hopefully it doesn't drown me out too much. Doesn't look like it should. And there is a co-op option too, which I thought was kind of cool. I was not expecting that for, you know, day one of an early access game that seems to have a lot of, a lot of features. It's got exploding bodies. Automatic inventory sorting, that sounds good. I'm pretty sure this is an RPG, but I don't know for sure yet. I don't know if it's a party-based RPG or if it's just gonna be like, like a Fallout-style Lone Wanderer RPG. It doesn't appear that co-op is online, but I could be wrong about that. Either way, I'm seeing this for myself for the first time. And 
we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start a new game now. Combat. Okay, so here's your difficulty. I like I like that. I appreciate it whenever you know it's obviously the easy difficulty, but it doesn't say easy. Cause it just says relaxed. And that makes sense. That's I think I think a lot of people are changing their tune on, you know, easy versus hard. Just because and it's like it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be the case that easy automatically means you're bad at games or you have a bad opinion because you have to play it on easy. I like the idea that relaxed is an option. And the way they phrase it, they're not trying to slap it in your face that you're choosing the easier difficulty. Enemies have worse stats. You can change the difficulty anytime during the game. You can also avoid combat encounters. Okay, that's good to know too. Combat will be challenging. You can change the difficulty anytime during the game. You can also avoid combat encounters. Enemies have better stats. Enemies rotate and shoot faster. Oh, okay, interesting. Extra okay, so here's your... XCOM style second wave options. Extra challenges. Passivism. You're not able to use weapons against other characters. Okay, so this isn't even just sec second wave options. This is like completely changing how you play. Immobility. You cannot roll. Veganism. You won't eat or drink any animal products. <laughs> you gotta love the irony. Or maybe it's not even really irony. It's just like genuine challenge of you're in a world of dead meat. But you won't eat, any dr eat or drink any animal products. I like that. I'm not going to choose any of these options, mind you. I'm just going through them because I find them interesting. Permadeath has only one save game and deletes the save game when you die. For an early access game, I would not cho recommend choosing options like this. If anyone who's watching my Subnautica stream yesterday can, you know, say. Because that wasn't a gameplay death I had. That was a computer shutting down death, not saving the game properly. And there's no backup saves because it's it was hardcore. So I'm not gonna choose something like this. Obstinatism. You gain no experience points and can, oh wow, so you stay at level one. Which tells me that there's levels in the game now too. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna stick with it standard. I don't know what kind of game this is. I could go hard, but I want to see the game as it's intended first before I decide to switch to hard mode. Planet Nexus, centuries after the bleeding. Amongst the remnants of old civilizations, humanity rests in silent cities. While machines wander, passing judgment. And the outcasts try to survive. Okay. So right now we're probably not on Earth. I say probably, this could be a Planet of the Apes type situation. Some sort of weird apocalyptic event has happened called the Bleeding. Core, five points. Skills, five points. Okay, so here's your hardiness, strength, finesse, occultism, cybertech, empathy. Okay, so these are your base character stats. These are different things that you can do. I'm gonna go with hardiness. Oh, and you're limited to two to start. Okay, interesting. Yeah, because you have six of these stats, but only four points overall. Allows the use of better ranged weapons. Better crit chances with ranged weapons. I'll go with that. Because you get a gun in this game. There are, look, it appears there's multiple guns. There's rifles. There's other stuff. 
Cybertech allows the use of most forms of implants and tech abilities. Empathy influences some interactions with other... I like empathy builds in video games, in RPGs. I almost never go for them. I like the idea of them, but I just don't tend to go in that direction. Cultism allows the use of abilities that communicate with the flesh. Increases focus energy for all abilities, plus zero. Plus one. Hmm. Allows the use of better melee weapons, better crit chances with melee weapons. Actually, you know what? Let's do cyber tech and focus on finesse. I want to be like a little bit tanky. The hardy, like, I don't, I don't want to be a tank type character. I want to focus on keeping the enemies away from myself. The extra hardiness is just for just gener general survivability and you know dealing with mistakes I'm probably gonna make. Animalism, a good understanding of animals, probably works well with the vegan option. Interacting with merchants, better prices. Proficiency with melee weapons like clubs, increased damage. Proficiency with melee weapons like blades, increased damage. Small guns like pistols and SMGs. I kind of want to go like rifles, sniper rifles, but I'm not sure. Advanced weapons, increased damage. Stealth. Influences how fast other characters discover you. Increases backstabbing damage. Lockpicking. Unlocking doors and containers. Increased chance of success in pickpocketing. Stealing from other characters. We'll go with small guns and high tech. Or we'll go rifles and high tech. See, the thing is, games like this, when you have melee or like different types of weapon skills, it's hard to tell how accessible those weapons are going to be right at the beginning of the game. Like, I could put points into high tech, but I might not actually get any high tech weapons for a little while. And this being an early access, I don't actually know how much game there is here. The fact that it's been in development for like five years could be a good indication that most, if not all, the story is done, but I don't know. Small guns, proficiency with small guns. If we got finesse, then you know what? I may as well go small guns and rifles. Or should I go... Yeah, you know what? I'll go rifles and sharp. And then maybe I'll go strength as well. I was not paying close enough attention to how many core points I had. Uh, bartering, go up. And stealth will go up once. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna rely on stealth except for avoiding combat, possibly. Sign now or later. Oh, okay. That's nice. You don't have to choose right away. Mildred. So you got these options. Templates. Okay, interesting. Uh, Max. We'll lean towards Max. Should I just be pale as fuck? I don't know. It's what when you get to like games like this, you you have to ask, hmm, do I want to make myself, or do I actually want to make like a cool character? I didn't mean it like that. Head.
Hmm. We have a lot of different head shapes available. Hair color. Okay, so head, head is just your face, basically. You're not changing. You're not changing your hair or facial hair or anything like that. You have different options for body. That's cool. Um. Hmm. Not sure what I want to name him. Cough, cloth cover? Okay, so that's like your pants. Accent color. Oh, interesting. So that's kind of like... Okay, that's cool. I like that. We'll do blue. Head. They all have very dark eyes. You don't really see much of their eyes at all. We'll go with him. I don't know. We'll call him Beavis, I guess. I don't know. A random name. What do we have for a random name? Okay. So I'm gonna press random name. And I'll get... I'm gonna press random name once. And if I don't like it, then I get only one more random roll. So let's see. Oh. No. <laughs> I'll try it again. Get the actual name. Geargos. Actually, you know what? I like that. We'll go with Geargos. Alright, let's go. Alright. So we're in the game. There's some green slider already. Okay, that's my inventory. Resources, body. Unknown brain plant. This belongs to you now. <laughs> I like how they say that. Unknown affliction. You were east out of the universal society because of this. Whatever this is. Alright. You don't have any enough awareness yet. Interesting. No quests, no entries. Gameplay time, nine minutes. Discovered items, three. They are my... Oh. For a second I thought they were iron knuckles, but they are just, just my bare hands. Unless maybe everybody has iron knuckles in this. Unknown brain implant. So this is my... This is everything I have in my body. Everything to do with my body. It's like... It's not even like my clothing, but stuff inside my body, I'm assuming. Okay, interesting. No stealth ability equipped. Oh, okay, control highlights. Press space to roll. Oh, okay, you got your roll stamina. So you can roll up to three- I can roll up to three times at once. In a row. In a row. So what's here? What is this machine? Looks broken. Trash. Okay. So now where's the death? Oh, there's the death. Yeah, this is not mine. That's not my death. Okay, good thing we haven't found our death this early in the game. Okay, that is some sort of robot, I'm assuming. Hello, okay. Welcome, former citizen. It looks like the operation has been successful. Do you remember who you are? Yes, I do. Okay. That is fortunate. 
we still take interest in your well-being. However, you have to leave us now. The danger of a possible contamination cannot be ignored. Please don't try to return to your old habitat. We have put security measures in place to prevent this. I'm probably going to do every robot voice like that now. <laughs> what security measures or so what happens to me now? I'll say the first one. What security measures? Your body will malfunction permanently when nearing one of our habitats. So what happens to me now? Where should I go? This is not for us to answer. You're free to go anywhere, as long as you don't try to enter a habitat. Here is all relevant info for you in written form in case you forget. We encourage you now to follow the surface integration course. Citizenship revoked. I like that. But you're free to leave any time you want. I'll take the course. I'm assuming that's my tutorial. All right, just continue towards section one then. Enforcer number nine. That talks east. Please maintain peaceful behavior. Trash. I'll take some more trash. Citizenship revoked. Wait, where's my trash? Okay. Oh, that's under resource. Oh, okay, so I'm assuming all of your different crafting materials and stuff go here. And all of your equipment goes here. All of your implants go here. And maybe you get, like, spells or something for your mind. I mean, not actual spells, but functionally. Something that works like spells in an RPG type game. Lockpicking? Impossible. Missing lockpick. Okay. Skill missing 0 out of 1. So you need to have at least one lockpicking to even try. Good to know. Surface integration course. The surface integration course is standard procedure to teach you basic survival skills. Please take caution. The course disables safety limits to better prepare you for the world outside. Good luck, former citizen, and goodbye. There's not something here. No. I'm looking for secret hidden things already. Because I can tell this is going to be one of those type of games. Nano health. That is under my items. Okay, cool. 70 health instantly, plus one focus energy. I'm at 25 out of 55, so I'll wait until I get a damage. Oh, it's telling me to use it now. Alright. I'll trust that the tutorial is not just saying that. Nice. Nice. Pick up the light combat vest. That will come in handy. Okay, there's a giant pile of flesh there. Open inventory with tab or click on the portrait. This probably used to be a bed. Oh, I have to equip it. Yes. Cool. Organs. Some sort of work table, operating table maybe. What is this place? No, I'm just gonna put those organs in my pocket. There's some meat. I have a feeling this is gonna be one of those games where you're just gonna be putting like loads of organs in like viscera in your pockets. This machine looks like it's connected to the door. Please refill organic lubricant. What? 
Okay, I think I know what that's supposed to mean. Let's look around a little bit more first. Usability, puke, anywhere. Okay. That's what we've picked up so far. That is med ingredients. Oh, interesting. Wait, can you just puke on command? Is that what that's implying? Oh. Oh, there we go. I was, I was starting to worry there for a second. Get, getting a little panic. Oh no, am I stuck in the geometry already? Some broken tools here. Nothing useful though. So I'm guessing this bucket is where I need to go. Shit. And... Oh, so you just have like a cooldown bar for your puke. Drop. No. Examine the machine again. Please refill organic lubricant. Well, here we go. Okay. Lost puke. Oh, hey, it worked. Alright, good to know you don't have to be hunting around your inventory to see which item to rub against which thing. Like in some old school point and click adventure games. It's active, apparently. What does that mean? This must have been valuable a long time ago. Don't know what that's, this is. Okay, so there is repeating, or er, there's not, there's loop, like a um, different dialogue. I have to exhaust. Wooden cudgel. This looks useful. But, well, there's a fight coming up ahead then, I guess. I'm assuming that's what that means. I have no idea what this is. To get used to. Although, if anyone's wondering, this game does apparently have gamepad support as well. I just prefer mouse and keyboard. Draw a weapon? Door looks half broken. Okay, I appreciate that. Destroy that door. That's good. So that means they make you take out your weapon and equip it to use it before you actually get into a fight. That's a good way to do it. Instead of just having a weird training dummy standing in the middle of the room that forces you to fight it somehow, you have a, a, a door that needs to be busted down. No. Ooh. Okay, I gotta watch the timing. Ooh. You don't really get a special cue for the very moment they attack. You just have to get used to their animations, I guess. Okay. I'm not sure what I feel about the melee combat. It's not quite Dark Souls, I'll tell you that. It's nice you don't have to click right on the enemy to, to target them properly. And you can, you can attack from a couple of steps away and your character will move in. Oh, maybe not always. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what you'll have to do then. You have to swipe. Wait, dodge. No. Okay, so you have to kind of use attacks. Find the right opportunity to dodge their attack and then attack them while they're missing you. Okay. I think I'm comfortable enough with it. It's just going to be a little bit janky.
gonna take some getting used to on the hitboxes, probably. Alright, and old rifle, nice. And we equip that immediately. Do we need to equip? No, we do not need to equip the ammo, which is nice. How do I... Oh, so you always have your range, range weapon to, equipped. Shoot all the red lights on the wall. Okay. Uh, okay. No reload needed. Does that mean I'm only... No. Why does it say one out of... Oh, okay, I have two other... No, that's not... <clears throat> Let me figure this out, because this might be important for ammo management. So that counter down there says one out of two. Now, does that mean I am using one of these three bullets and I have two left after that? Switch back to melee. Happens automatically. Oh. That's a dude. Or it was a dude. See, sometimes he seems to attack faster. Or he does a follow-up attack that's a little bit faster, maybe. That might be what I'm seeing. Ow. Mechanics. Interesting. Crafting resource. So this guy got owned by this robot drone turret thing that only does a one, or like a zero hit, da like zero health damage. A zero damage hit is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> what we got here? Not guilty. That will come in handy. Personal notes. I am innocent. Didn't harm him in any way. But I... Read. Didn't harm him in any way. Didn't harm him in any way. But I was deemed too dangerous. I refuse to go. Want back. Need to be reconnected. Cannot live without. I'll think of something. Huh. Nice. Oh. What does that mean to me? Is that knowledge? Okay. General thoughts. Not guilty. Okay, so you can basically read the notes and then keep them forever so they don't take up inventory space. That's good to know. I wonder if keeping notes in that way changes things. Notes, crafting reserve. Oh, okay, so it becomes a piece of paper that you can use. Interesting. It doesn't just go away. Alright, so there is... Targeting button to switch to range combat. Done. So I actually, I have to click on it to pick it up. 20 rifle. Okay, cool. So that's 0 out of 22. I have 22 in my inventory. If I reload, it shows 1 out of 21, but it still shows 22 here. Okay, good to know. So one of those 22 bullets are already in my rifle. Okay. That might be important when we're switching weapons around later. Stealth module. Oh, nice. Open inventory with tab or click on the portrait. Click on the body tab. Mode ability cloaks you from being immediately seen by other characters. Equip. Okay. And that's the alt key now. Because I had pressed that earlier and it said no module equipped. I wonder how tough this guy is, because I would like to actually get into a real fight. Oh, he gets a vision cone once you turn stealth. 
Okay. Move, move, move. Oh, oh. Oh, he saw me. Ah, man. I, he did a lot of damage to me there. I was at full health. This is going to be quite the tutorial. This is going to be quite the game. That's what I needed. Hopefully I get some more health after this tutorial. Okay. So what determines... Is it just whether or not I get spotted? Oh, no. Oh. Movement. Okay, I see how that works. <laughs> uh, that's a good spot to stay. I did not plan that out. I just happened to stop there when I realized my stamina bar was going down. Oh. Okay. Alright, good to know. That's how that works. And we got some pulsating mounds of flesh. Hold space and use mouse for melee attacks from current position. Oh no. No, that's shift. That's what that is. Can't have enough of these. Now it says current position, but you still take a step forward when you take that swing. Brains. Oh, handy. Can't have enough of these. Okay. So no matter what, you take at least one step forward whenever you attack. That's good to know. Actually, that kind of solves some of the issues I thought it was having earlier. Alright, cool. Caves. So we got a picture of a sun and a picture of what might be a down arrow or it might be just some triangle wave. I can't interact with them, so all I got to go on is what I can see. Click. That's ominous. But it's also kind of useful, seeing how the cable changes color. Wait. Nice. Alright, yeah, so I feel like, you know, it's good for just walking around town or whatever if you're doing the mouse clicking. But if you're in an actual dungeon, you probably want to use WASD more. I'm not sure how that feels on controller, but... Space all. Right, bullets. Can't have enough of these. But it's nice on keyboard, because the control key, which you use to highlight everything, is... Obviously, it's right next to the shift key. Hmm. I'm getting a little bit of droppage on the stream. Try moving around, see if that makes a difference. Hmm. Is it just when I'm moving around in this game? Nope. Okay, I think that's just my crappy internet being crappy. Ooh. Yeah, because it seems like my stream just started having some issues. Hmm. Okay, well, recording at least, so this can still go up on YouTube if anybody cares enough to watch it. Hopefully those issues with the stream don't continue. I don't really have any way to fix them at this point. Holster your weapon, T. Okay, I'm going to talk to a giant mound of flesh, aren't I? Like, 
I think I can see it in the bottom left of the screen. Oh, I don't feel so well. Those are some chunky puke noises. Blurg. 